Hello, and thank you for your interest in the Admiral County Architectural Review Board. This presentation is designed to provide a general understanding of what the Architectural Review Board does, how the design review process works, and what an entrance quarter is. Let's start by defining the term entrance quarter. An entrance quarter, or EC for short, is a street that travels to or through a historic area, and the designation provides for an extra layer of design review for new development along that street. The Elmore County Zoning Ordinance currently lists several entrance quarter streets. The first entrance quarters were established in 1990. They include all the streets highlighted in yellow on this map. They include the primary commercial corridors in the county, like Route 29 North and Route 250 East, and they also include some streets that are more rural in character, like Route 20 South. In 2000, Airport Road and Hydraulic Road were added to the overlay. In 2005, Rye Road East was added. And most recently, in 2018, the John Warner Parkway was added as an entrance corridor. Entrance quarters are overlay zoning districts. That means that entrance quarter requirements are in addition to the requirements of the underlying zoning district. For example, Route 29 North is an entrance quarter. Many of the properties along Route 29 have some type of commercial zoning, highway commercial, for example. That commercial zoning has requirements associated with it. Those requirements remain in place and the entrance quarter requirements are added to them. That entrance quarter overlay includes parcels that are adjacent to the street, and the full depth of the adjacent parcel is included in the overlay. The EC overlay also includes parcels or portions of parcels that are not adjacent to the street, but are within 500 feet of the right of way. In this image, the red crosshatch shows property that falls within the overlay. There's one more important point to note when we talk about overlay limits. The limits pertain to the parcels as they existed at the time the street was designated an entrance quarter. So even if an adjacent parcel with a depth of more than 500 feet is subdivided after the street is designated an entrance quarter, those subdivided parcels remain in the overlay. Virginia State Code allows localities to establish entrance quarters and to regulate aesthetics. To be an entrance quarter, state code requires that a street meet two criteria. One, the street has to be designated as an arterial street or highway. Two, the street has to be a significant route of tourist access. Albemarle's entrance quarters provide access to or through the counties and the city's historic landmarks, structures, and districts. Development on these streets receives the extra layer of design review for reasons that are set out in the county's comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance. One purpose of the overlay is to establish and maintain orderly and attractive development. This helps meet the comprehensive plan goal that says attractive entrance quarters will welcome visitors and residents to and within the county. The other primary purpose is to ensure that the new development is architecturally compatible with the historic architecture of the area. Entrance quarter review is necessary whenever there is a requirement for a site plan site plan amendment, or a building permit in the entrance quarter overlay. That includes initial site plans, final site plans, all types of site plan amendments, and any type of building permit, including sign permits. The site plan review covers all site features, including the site layout, grading, landscaping, and lighting. It also includes the architectural design. Review of applications in the entrance quarters can take two different routes. Staff level review is available for proposals that are less complicated and expected to have limited visual impacts. They include things like signs, buildings that are more distant from the street, minor changes to existing buildings, and changes to equipment and lighting. Staff can review and approve these applications without going to an ARB meeting. More complicated proposals are reviewed by staff, a report outlining recommendations is prepared, and the report is presented to the Architectural Review Board in a public meeting. An approval from the ARB is called a Certificate of Appropriateness. Considering requests for Certificates of Appropriateness is the ARB's primary duty. 
but the ARB has other duties as well. They include recommending areas to be included in the overlay district, advising other bodies on land use matters, promoting the entrance quarter design guidelines, and reviewing initial site plans. ARB approval, the certificate of appropriateness, is required prior to site plan approval and prior to building permit approval. ARB applications are reviewed according to the entrance quarter design guidelines. The guidelines outline some very specific requirements. For example, three and one half inch caliper large shade trees are required along the street frontage. But the guidelines also allow for a substantial degree of discretion and flexibility on the part of the ARB. For example, the guidelines also state, buildings should relate to their site and the surrounding context of buildings. ARB meetings are public meetings, not public hearings. That means the meetings are open to the public they have different advertisement requirements, and there is no requirement for accepting public comment. Typically, however, the ARB has chosen to allow public comment. There are a number of actions that the ARB can decide to take in the public meeting. The ARB can provide a list of comments for the next round of review. They can approve an application as proposed. The ARB can approve an application with conditions. The ARB can agree to defer the review of an application and they can deny an application, though that rarely happens. Typically, the ARB works with applicants to revise a proposal until it meets the guidelines. ARB actions may be appealed to the Board of Supervisors. Let's look at a few applications that were reviewed by the ARB. The first example we'll consider is the CVS Pharmacy at the intersection of Rio Road and Route 29 North. This slide shows a landscape plan that was submitted early in the review process. It includes very little landscaping along the Route 29 frontage. The EC guidelines call for large shade trees, interspersed ornamental trees, and shrubs along the frontage. This is a revised plan submitted in an attempt to address ARB comments. In this plan, shrubs were added, but no trees. There are utilities and easements across the frontage, so meeting the guidelines was challenging. In the end, after continued review and revisions, ornamental trees were added to the frontage. And the plan was approved. This image shows the completed building and the landscaping in place. This example is a car dealership at Pantops. The original proposal is shown in the pictures at the top. They show the standard franchise design at the time, which does not have a strong connection to the historic architecture of Albemarle. In the upper right image, you can see a sign reading any town. This is a clear example of how many businesses want their buildings to look the same everywhere, regardless of the context. It is a clear example that the unique context of Albemarle has not been considered. The image on the bottom is the design that was approved and constructed. It shows a connection to local architecture and the use of masonry materials, division of the elevations into a base, middle, and top, and repetition of architectural forms. This example is a more recent proposal for a renovation of the building at 2415 Ivy Road. The image at the top is the original design that was proposed. This original proposal removed the characteristics of the existing building that are representative of the historic architecture of the area. The ARB required changes to the proposal and the design was revised to maintain the red brick and to add details that made it look less like a standard strip mall and more consistent with the industrial character of the property. This last example is a comparison of a local building with an approved comprehensive sign plan at the top of the slide and a non-local building without one at the bottom. In Albemarle's entrance quarters, comprehensive sign plans are required for buildings that house more than one tenant. The purpose is to provide a level of coordination in sign design across a building to help maintain an orderly and attractive appearance. On the building at the bottom, where there is no comprehensive sign plan, signs have no consistency in type, color, or placement. The result is a disorganized appearance and a development where competing signage is allowed to be the primary visual experience. On the building at the top, where there is a comprehensive sign plan, signs have some variation in color and letter style and can incorporate graphics consistency in sign type and a consistent placement on the building provide coordination 
and the result is an orderly and attractive appearance. Finally, there are two recent areas of ARB work that we'd like to tell you about. The first is our work to correct some mistakes that were made when the entrance corridors were first established. Recently, we discovered that some of the streets that are listed as entrance corridors in our zoning ordinance, or some portions of some of those streets, were not actually eligible to be designated as entrance corridors because they don't have the required arterial classification. Those are the streets or segments that you see in red on this map. Earlier this year, the Board of Supervisors adopted a resolution to request arterial status for some of those streets, including Avon Street Extended, a portion of Barracks Road, Thomas Jefferson Parkway, and Richmond Road from Route 22 to the county line. The applications have been submitted to VDOT for review, and that review could take a number of months to complete. Once the arterial issue is resolved, we can begin to consider other options for protecting the non-arterial corridors, possibly including historic district or scenic highway designation. Until the arterial issue is resolved, we are not applying entrance corridor regulations to the non-arterial streets and segments. The other item of recent work that we'd like to update you on is the ARB's work on the entrance corridor design guidelines. For a number of years, both the ARB and staff have wanted to complete updates that would provide guidelines that are specific to the character of the individual corridors. Workload and staffing have limited our ability to do that work, but recently, the ARB members have begun studying the individual corridors with the goal of creating an addendum to the entrance corridor guidelines. That document will identify the character defining features of the individual corridors and will help explain how the guidelines are interpreted and how the primary goals of the guidelines can be met. We'll also explain the meaning of some of the terms used in the guidelines, like compatibility, unity, and coherence. We expect this addendum will help staff, board members, developers, and the general public to better understand how the entrance quarter design guidelines are applied in the development review process. That concludes our overview of the architectural review board process. We will be happy to try to answer any questions that you may have.